A comparator is a redstone transmission component that compares signals and alters the output depending on the signals. In today's episode, we're going to be covering everything that you need to know about the comparator. So the basics of a comparator, we have the input on the back side here, and that's where the power is going to be going in. On each side, we have a modifier input. So we have one on this side, and we have a modifying input on this side as well. Both sides of the modifying input is going to act as the same. So for example, if you are using this in subtract mode and you are minusing 5 on this side, and you are minusing 3 on this side, it's not going to minus 5 and then minus 3. It's going to take the highest of the redstone signals going into the auxiliary input, and it's going to use that for its equation. And then on the far end here, we have the output. And this is going to output the redstone signal and put out whatever redstone signal strength after the calculations have been made. The comparator has two different modes. We have the first mode, which is the standard mode, which is going to be the comparing mode. And then we also have the subtract mode. By left clicking it, you can see the light on the front comes on, and that's going to put the comparator into subtract mode. We're going to be going over these two modes here shortly. So in both comparison mode and subtract mode, the comparator is going to put out whatever signal is going into the back of it. Keep in mind that redstone signal degrades as it goes down the redstone wire. So if we turn this on, we're going to have 15 here, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So the comparator is receiving a redstone signal strength of 5. The first redstone strength on the output will always match the input strength here, as long as there's not any modifying input going into the side. So since there is no modifying circuit, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Keep in mind whenever making calculations with the comparator here that you're going to have the strongest signal here. So instead of starting at 1 whenever you're counting, you're going to start at 15 and work your way down. However, whenever you are trying to figure out your output here, you're going to have the strongest signal strength here. And if we count all of the illuminated redstone, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which is going to be a redstone signal strength of 5. Just keep in mind that we have the lowest input here, and then we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, giving us a total signal strength of 5, counting up. So with this powered, we can add another lever in here, and this is going to give us 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. So we should have a signal strength of 10 whenever we flip this on. And as you can see, it powers all the way out to here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Keep in mind, as previously stated, as long as we don't have any modifying input going into either side of it, we're always going to take the redstone signal strength that's going into the back of the comparator, and that's going to be carried forward to the very first redstone dust on the output. So if we have 10 going in here, 10 will be here. If we have 9 going in here, 9 will be here, and so forth. And then it will degrade from there. However, this is not the case if you are hard powering a solid block with it. Much like a repeater, the comparator can hard power a solid block, and it can also soft power the components or redstone in front of it. However, whenever you are hard powering a block, this block is going to be hard powered to whatever power level is going into the back of the comparator. So just like this would be 10, this would be 10. The same goes for over here. If this is 10, then this would be 10. However, this solid block does not cause any redstone signal loss and it carries the signal forward. So for example, if we have a redstone signal strength of 10 going into here, it's going to carry that signal strength of 10 forwards to this block, which is going to hard power this block to a signal strength of 10, and then it's going to carry the signal strength of 10 here, and it's going to start it here, instead of starting it right after the comparator. So we can grab that and place it down, and then we can check our signal strength. So we have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 going into it. So then it's going to hard power this block to 10, powering this to 10, and then we're going to have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Which means that we have a signal strength of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now although the power level can vary, this is still a hard powered block, so you can have the power come out at top, you can have it come out of the side, you can have it come out down below. So it is going to work the exact same as all other hard powered blocks, however it is just going to have a varying output depending on whatever the input is. The redstone comparator is always going to go by the highest level going into it, so if we place down a lever here, you can see that we have the lever connecting on the back here. And if we count from this point forward, we're going to have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. So it would get a signal strength of 7 going into the back of here. However, because it's connected here, it's going to get a signal strength of 15 going directly into it, as shown here. The redstone comparator will work the exact same way on both modes as long as there is no auxiliary input going into either side. So now we have it on subtract mode, and we can turn this on, and as you can see, we still have the redstone signal 15 going to power that lamp. One thing that is great about adding in a solid block in front of the comparator is, as mentioned, it carries that signal forward. 
So if we run into a situation like this to where we can have a redstone signal strength of 15 going into here, you can see it's going to put out a redstone signal strength of 15. However, because that's 16 blocks away, it's not going to power that redstone lamp. However, if we take our solid block and we place it in front of this comparator, now since it has 15 going into it, it's going to strongly power the solid block, which is going to put out a signal strength of 15 here. And then that's going to go all the way down the line and reach our redstone lamp. So let's talk about the two different modes that the comparator has and wrap our heads around how they work. In front of me here we have a setup and it basically shows all of the signal strength numbers that the comparator is going to receive. Now these pistons here, whenever these are activated they are going to give out a signal strength of 15 and that's because they're going to be powering the redstone dust that's directly going into the repeater. The only reason why these are here is because I cannot put a lever right here, one because there's a sign there, and two because the lever would actually power both of the redstone lines. So I'm using a sticky piston with a redstone block directly above it and we can extend that and power the very top of that redstone line. That way we get a nice precise power input. So first we're going to go over comparison mode. I think that this mode is the most familiar with most players. However, I'm still going to briefly go over it and let you guys know how it works. The comparison mode is going to be the standard mode that the comparator comes in. So as long as that little light on the front is off, it's going to be in comparison mode. The way that this is going to work is it's going to compare signals and it's going to compare the side signal to whatever input signals going into the back. If the signal strength is lower or equal to the signal strength going into the back of it, then it will allow the signal strength going into the back of it to pass through. However, if the signal strength going into either one of the modifying inputs are stronger, then it's going to turn off the comparator and it's not going to allow any power to come out of the output. So let's go ahead and go over this and show you what I mean. We're going to put in a signal strength of 10. So we could turn on this lever that puts out 15. So we have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 going into it. So that means that the comparator is going to have a signal strength of 10 going into it. And then if we go over here, we're going to start with a 1. So this is going to have the comparator reading a signal strength of 1, which is going to be 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, which is what the comparator is going to read. So because 1 is lower than 10, that means that this is not going to turn off the comparator and it's going to allow the signal strength to come through. And because the redstone signal strength of 10 is going in the input, we're going to have a signal strength of 10 coming out of the output. So let's say that it is equal. So we have a signal strength of 10 going into the back of it. We'll go over to the auxiliary input and we will find 10. And power that on. So we have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 is what the redstone comparator is receiving. So 10 there, 10 there. Since it is equal and not higher than, then it's going to still put out that redstone signal of 10 coming through. So let's see what happens whenever we give it a higher signal strength. Over here we still have 10 that's selected going into the input. And on the modifying input over here we're going to give it one higher which is 11. And as soon as we give it that you can see that this is going to detect that we have a higher signal strength going into the modifying input. Which is then going to turn off the comparator. Now inside of this mode we have this varying signal strength going into here. So we can have whatever signal strength that we want going in. And then we have whatever signal strength we want coming out. However, it's going to act as an on-off switch any time that the signal strength on the auxiliary input is higher than whatever's going into it. Now one more thing to cover while we're in comparison mode. If we put this back on 10 on the auxiliary input. So over here we have 10 going into it. 10 on the auxiliary input. If we go to this other side here, we're going to select 10 as well. And as you can see, we have 10 on that side and 10 on this side. But we still have power coming out of it, which is still 10 coming out of the output. The reason for that is because it treats both of these auxiliary inputs as the exact same input. So it's not going to add 10 over there and 10 over here giving a total of 20. It's just going to look at it as it was one input and go by the highest signal strength. So if we go over to this side and then we turn off the 10 and go to 11. Now since we have a higher signal strength of 11 going into it, it's going to turn off the comparator. Now let's talk about the subtract mode. This mode is something that I don't think a lot of people use a whole lot, but just like the locking repeaters, I think that they should because it is very, very useful depending on whatever you're doing. This is going to be a lot more common inside of the higher tech community because it gives us another tool to achieve the and or circuit. And or meaning that if we put in a signal strength of this, then we can have this result. But if we put in a signal strength of this, then we can have this result. So with the basis of the comparator inside of the subtract mode, what we are basically going to do is have this do some subtraction. So if we go back to a signal strength of 10, we can toggle that on inside of the input. And then if we go over here to the auxiliary input, and then we select 5 for example. So let's find 5. Here we have it. We can toggle that on. And then that's going to cause the comparator to subtract. So on the input we have the 10. So 10 
minus the 5 over here is going to be 5. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Because 10 minus 5 equals 5. However, if we go over here and we change the 10 going into it to a signal strength of 13, we will then have 13 minus 5 equals 8. But if we have 13 here, and then we change this over here from a 5, let's do a 9. So we have 13 minus 9 is going to equal 4. So this time, let's go ahead and do this side instead. So let's pick, let's pick 7. We have 7 going into it. And then on this side, we'll pick, let's pick 5. So we basically have 7 minus 5 equals a signal strength of 2. Well, what happens if we use the other input while using this one? Well, the exact same thing that I mentioned before. Because it treats these as one input, we are going to have 7 minus 5 is going to equal 2. So let's minus a 1 from that and see if it changes it. So we have 7 minus 5, and then we have a 1 that should be subtracted over here. However, because it treats it as one input, we are only going to have a signal strength of 2 coming out instead of 1. And then if we do a 7 minus a 7, we are going to obviously get 0. So we're not going to have an output here at all because 7 minus 7 equals 0. At this point, I hope that you have a pretty good understanding as to how both modes of the computer work. Now let's take a look at something else that the comparator can do, and then we can take a look at a few things that we can make with the comparator. So the comparator has a very special function that it can do, and that's going to be reading the state of the block that is behind it. As you can see here, we have a chest here, we have a item frame here, we have a lectern with a book here, and we even have a cake over here. We're going to be going over the rest of these here in a moment, we're going to start with the chest here. The comparator is going to read the contents inside of the chest and put out whatever signal strength after doing a calculation. The calculation is going to be the percentage full that the container is. So if we have this chest with the container that is 100% filled up with stacks of 64, then it's going to put out a max signal strength of 15. However, if we pull out a bunch of stacks here, you will see on the left hand side if you look at that redstone line, as I pull these out the signal strength will actually get weaker and weaker, and now we're down to a signal strength of 2. And then if I pull some more out, now we're down to a signal strength of 1. So the redstone comparator will put out a range of signal strength depending on how full the chest is. Starting with a completely empty chest at 0, to a full redstone signal of 15 all the way full. And it's going to range from 0 to 15 all the way in between. Okay, so we have an understanding with how this chest works here. We have 27 spots here. However, what happens if we don't have nearly this much space to fill up? So I can remove this, and we're going to put down a hopper instead. Instead of 27 spots, now we have 5. How is this going to affect the comparator's output? Well, the exact same way. It's going to go by the percentage of how full this hopper is. So since we have no items inside of here, we have a signal strength of 0. However, if we put in a stack, since we put that stack in, you can see that we have a higher signal strength now. But why did it not put out a signal strength of 1? It put out a signal strength of 1 whenever we put one stack in before. Well, that's because, as I mentioned, it goes by the percentage. That's because putting in a stack of 64 is going to be a higher percentage of the total container's capacity. So now that you have a pretty good idea of how it reads containers, we can go to the next one, which is going to be reading the item frame on the back of it. Keep in mind I said on the back of it, because if we have a item frame on the top of it or the side of it, as you can see, it's not going to affect that comparator at all. However, if we have a item frame on the back of it and we have an item inside of here at the 12 o'clock position, it's going to put out a signal strength of 1. So whenever we turn this by 1, it's going to put out a signal strength of 2. And then if we turn it again, it's going to put out a signal strength of 3. And it's going to do this all the way up to a signal strength of 8. A function like this is very handy to use, like a dial, like I did here inside of my bookstore. You can also use a comparator to read something like a lectern. However, the comparator is not going to read the lectern itself. It's kind of going to read the book through the lectern. So as you can see, if we place down a book here, the book is going to put out a signal strength of 1 as long as it is either empty or on the first page. Now there is an equation for this that I'm not going to go over, however basically the higher number of the pages that you have and what page you are currently on goes into the calculation of what the comparator is going to put out. If you want this comparator to put out a signal strength dependent on whatever page you are on, then you are going to want exactly 30 pages inside of your book. So as you can see we have a total of 4 pages inside of this book. And whenever I say a total of four pages, I am saying technically because you have one on the left and one on the right. However, you need to keep in mind that if you are using this inside of a redstone sense, whatever page you are on is counted as one page. So although we're looking at two different pages, this is going to be counted as one page. So since we are on the first page, it's going to be putting out a signal strength of one. 
But if we go back into here and change to the second page, then it's going to be putting out a signal strength of 15. And the reason for that is we are looking at ratios again. Just like it's going to look at how full a container is, it's going to look at how far you are in the book compared to the number of pages. So if we grab this book here, then we can modify it. And we're just going to add pages until we get to 30. So now that we have 30 pages technically, keep in mind that this is only going to flip 15 times. So because it's only going to flip 15 times, that means that you are going to get a signal strength for every time that this book flips. So if we put the book back on the lectern, we have the first page, which is going to give us a signal strength of 1. We can flip it to 2. That's going to give us a signal strength of 2. We can flip it to 3. That's going to give us a signal strength of 3, and so forth. Again, keep in mind that this is constantly comparing the ratio of how full a container is. So if the book were to be a container, it's going to compare what page you're at to the amount of pages that you have. Now moving on, we are now reading a signal out of a cake. Yes, you heard me correctly, a cake. There is an entire plethora of different items that the comparator can read an output from, and a cake being one of them. The cake is 100% full, so it's going to put out a signal strength of 14. However, if we take a bite out of it, the cake is no longer 100% full. And it's going to compare the ratio of what that cake is to how full it should be, and then give you an output based on that. So if we take some more bites out of the cake, you can see that we have hardly any cake left, and we have hardly any redstone signal coming out of it. We can take one last bite, we're going to have two coming out of there. And then if we take the last bite, you can see that's going to make the redstone signal completely go away. Now something that's really cool about the comparator, just like it can have a solid block in front of it and pass the signal through, it can actually read a container through a solid block as well. So just like before, if we take some of that cake away, you can see that the signal is going to degrade depending on how much of that cake I take away. And if I completely remove that cake, well, we're going to lose the signal just like before. However, keep in mind, in order to do this, it does have to be a solid block or a specific component. So we can put our cake back. Now, what do I mean by a specific component? Well, we can remove this block, and we'll just grab a piston, and we'll place a piston down here. Now, as you can see, that just turned on, and that's going to be able to read that cake through that piston, which is a pretty cool function. And that's because this piston cannot be read by a comparator, so if we remove that cake altogether, then that piston is not going to output anything because it cannot be read by a comparator. And as you can see, even if that piston is powered, it's still not going to be able to be read by a comparator either. Now if you were paying attention, I said some components, and that's because if the comparator is able to read a specific component, it's going to read this component instead of reading whatever's behind it. So to show you that, we can remove this piston here and place down a dropper facing up. This dropper is going to be empty. And you can see, since it's not reading the cake behind it, because it's reading this dropper, it's going to be putting out zero. However, if we take a dropper that actually has items in it and place it down, since this one is 100% full, it's going to put out a full redstone signal strength of 15. Another cool function of the comparator is, since the comparator is going to output the same signal on the first block here as the input that's going into the back of it, it can actually carry the exact same redstone signal strength through a distance without having the signal degrade at all. So as you can see here, we're reading this cake, which is going to be 100% full, so it's putting out a signal strength of 15, which is right here going into this comparator. And since this comparator is going to first put out a signal strength of 15 before it starts to degrade, that is going to give the other comparator a input of 15, which is then going to put out a signal strength of 15. And then as long as you don't go further than one block, it's not going to start to degrade. So now we have 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and so forth. And to visualize what I just said, if we remove some of the cake, that's going to give us a signal strength of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And since we're reading off the exact same piece of cake, this should give us a signal strength of 8 too. So it's going to pass on 8, and then 8, and then 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 which is going to be a signal strength of 8. Using the ability for the signal to degrade can lead to some pretty cool redstone contraptions, like this in front of us. Here we have a redstone pulse extender, so we're going to be putting a redstone signal of 15 into it by this button. The redstone signal of 15 is going to go into here. Since this is going to pass the signal through, we're going to get 15 here. And then it's going to go down by 1 to 14. Then this is going to pass the 14 through to here, which is going to be 14. Then it's going to degrade a little further, go into 13. Then it's going to pass to 13 through to here, 13, 12, and so forth. You get the idea. Then we're using a repeater, which is going to take whatever signal strength goes into it from 1 all the way up to 15, and it's going to boost it all the way up to 15, regardless of the signal strength going into it. So to see this in motion, we can hit this here, and it's all going to happen very quickly, but if you pay attention to that redstone dust, you can see the degradation process taking place, and this is going to make for a nice little pulse extender. 
However, because it takes one redstone tick for it to pass through a comparator, this is going to be able to be amplified by placing a bunch of comparators together inside of a configuration like this. So if we place a button over here instead, this is going to give us a signal strength of 15. If we have the button over here, because it's not going to go into this comparator, it's going to start here at 15, then it's going to start to degrade, and it's going to get a 14 instead. So if you want the longest pulse extender, you're going to want to have the 15 redstone signal going directly into this side of the pulse extender. And as you can see, if we hit this button here, this one is going to be substantially longer because it has more delay in it. Now before the redstone comparator come along, we had to do something like this, which is just a ton of repeaters, which is going to induce a lot more lag, and it's going to take up a lot more room than what we have over there to the left. However, the comparators over here is not only a smaller form, it is also going to be a lot more efficient as a pulse extender. So if we hit this button over here, you can see it's going to ignite both of these at the exact same time. However, the repeaters are going to go out way before the comparators on the left. Ah, the modern advances in redstone. But it gets better. See, if we use the subtract function inside of the comparator, then we can use this to make a very, very fast redstone clock. So if it's configured like this, we're going to be putting in a redstone signal of 15. And that's going to put out a redstone signal of 15 here. But because it degrades, we're going to have 15, 14, 13. And then since we're in subtract mode, we're going to subtract 15 from 13 going into the side, which is going to give us 2. Because it's giving us 2, we're going to have a signal strength of 2 here, a signal strength of 1 here, and a signal strength of 0 here which means that it's not going to be able to subtract anything because once that signal degrades, we're going to have 15 minus zero is going to be 15. So it's going to put out a signal strength of 15 again, and then it's going to go 15, 14, 13, then 15 minus 13 again is two, and then it's going to continue that around over and over again until you stop the input on the back. To show you what I mean, we can throw that on, and as you can see, it's going to make a very quick clock, and we can use that to power a dropper. Now for whatever reason this can be a little bit buggy, you want to make a length of redstone away from it like this, and then that's going to allow that to activate the dropper. However, if we break this dropper here, and we move it a little bit closer, like right here, and then we turn it on, it's going to tick that one time, however it's not going to update that dropper at all. There is no reason why this should happen, but it does, so be aware if you're going to be using the circuit. So let's say that we take two of those functions that we just learned and we add them together. We can make a comparator clock here because this is inside of subtract mode, which is going to make the very fast comparator clock as you just saw. However, we need a power source behind it. That power source is going to be from this container here, because if you remember, depending on the amount of items that you have inside of the container, it's going to output a signal depending on how full it is. Which means if we have no items inside of here, it's not going to put out anything. But if we put a stack in here, then it's going to start putting out a signal strength. But because we only have a stack in here, it's only going to put out a signal strength of 2, which is not going to be enough to activate this comparator clock. So if we grab some more and we place some more inside of here, you can see we have 64 plus 18, which is just going to be below the threshold to turn this on to a signal strength of 3. So if we add one more item, you will be able to see that now we have a signal strength of 3, and that's going to activate that comparator clock, which then we can use to actually power this dropper and make a auto dropper circuit. However, as soon as it removes that one block there, it's going to not have enough power to power the comparator clock, leaving all of these items inside of this dropper. And using this as a auto dropper circuit, you definitely don't want to have any of these items left inside of here. So what can we do? We can do something like this. So what we have here is a dropper here, which is going to be read by this comparator through this solid block. And as soon as we have at least one item inside of here, it's going to put out a signal strength of 1 from this comparator, which is then going to be amplified to 15 from this repeater. Once it's amplified, that's going to give this comparator a signal strength of 15, which is going to give it enough signal strength to activate the comparator clock. So it would output the 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. And since we have a powered piece of redstone on top of a solid block, it's going to be able to power that. And because components can be powered next to a soft powered block, it's going to power that dropper or dispenser and dispense everything out of it. So as you can see, we can place a bunch of items inside of here, and it's going to spit those all out very quickly, and as soon as we get down to zero, it's going to stop, and that comparator clock is going to shut off. Now you might notice that I have three hoppers going into this, and that is because this is actually pumping out items at two and a half hopper speeds, so if you only have two lines of hoppers going into here, it's going to bottleneck it and not utilize the full potential of the dropper system. And that's going to be roughly about seven items per second, when typically the regular rate of a dropper system is going to be about two hopper speed, or approximately five items per second. And you can see that ran here by this comparator clock, so the comparator is going to read through here, picking up the item which is going to be sensed by this comparator, outputting a signal to solid block is going to carry that over, and power that sticky piston is going to push that forward, activating this observer clock, powering this block, powering that dropper. 
And if we remove both of those droppers and replace them with droppers that have items inside of it, we can have ourselves a little race. You let me know what circuit you think is faster. Well guys, that's going to about wrap up this lesson. I know that this has been a little longer of an episode. However, there is a ton, as you can see, to go over with the comparator. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and drop a like for me. It really does help out the channel. And as always, I do greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the lesson tomorrow. Bye.